Now, if you've had a time before where you've harvested or you've gotten bud that really didn't have that funk you were looking for, it may have smelled more planty, more hay-like, or just didn't have any funk at all. It sucks. I've been there. I know. Not a good experience. How you get some stinky, smelly, tasty bud? Well, I'm gonna go over exactly how you do that in this video here. So before we do get started, big shout out to all the subscribers. YouTube's been decent to all the cannabis channels lately. It's been getting a little bit better, but it's kind of hard keeping in contact with you guys. So anyone who's not subscribed already or not hit the notification bell, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it to be notified every time we drop new content, which will be every Sunday. So with that being said, stinky, tasty butt. That's all I ever wanted. I can't stand having stuff that's just pretty and doesn't really have that funk to back it. I've had too many times where I've had great looking strains or I've purchased great looking butt at the dispensary, but there was nothing there. There was no terps, there was no flavonoid, there was nothing that really really resonated with me. Like I'm looking for something that has that uniqueness to it. And in general, when I get some bud that doesn't have that, I don't even want to smoke it. I've realized at a certain point, I'm not really just a general stoner. Yes, believe it or not, I'm not a complete just stoner. I like particular strains, I like particular flavors. And if I don't get that in a strain that I'm looking for, I'm not gonna keep growing it. Now before I break into the actual tips, what are terpenes and flavonoids? Terpenes are the compounds responsible for the aroma and flavors of cannabis and support cannabinoids in producing desired effects. Flavonoids are similar to terpenes, the fact that they contribute to the aroma and the flavor profile, but they also all have their own unique therapeutic effects. Almost every strain has their own unique characteristics when it comes to flavor and flavonoids, terpenes. You're gonna end up having a unique experience for the most part for each strain. Each terpene kind of has its own effect similar to essential oils, to know exactly what these terpenes are and how they affect you, check out the link below. It's gonna be linked over to True Terpenes Guide. They got a really nice breakdown. So big shout out to True Terpenes for that one. Let's get into the actual tips on how you're gonna bring out that funk and really get those terps that you're looking for. Now, if you stick to the end, I do have a little bonus tip that I recently discovered and that has definitely been showing me some great results. Now, tip number one, you wanna start with genetics that have the desired terpene that you're looking for. Now, when you're purchasing strains, you know, like I discussed in the seed video a couple weeks back, you're gonna to wanna to get quality genetics, of course. We mention that constantly but not just quality genetics, you're gonna to wanna to get the ones that have the terpenes or the desired effect that you're looking for. I've gotten a few that have the names or the parents that have that, but the description, the way they describe that flavor, that aroma, it's not really what I'm looking for. So when you're purchasing seeds, when you're getting a clone, make sure you're getting something that you know, you at least have an idea that you like that flavor. Now some strains are gonna have that fire look, they're gonna look amazing, I call that IG weed. Rarely have I gotten bud that is unbelievably beautiful that also packs that punch in the terps and the potency. Now, a lot of strains that do have those characteristics, either A, don't produce a whole lot, or B, may be a little bit more finicky when you grow them. Two off the top of my head that I could think of would be Louis the 13 OG and Holy Grail Kush. Two really tasty, really pretty strains, but were really finicky. One always seeded on me, and the other one just didn't produce a whole lot. Those may not be your tried and true yielders, but the quality is definitely there and is usually better than a lot of those ones that will produce those giant colas, in my opinion at least. Now for the next tip, I'm gonna finish this blunt obviously and then I'm gonna run up to the grocery store and link up with the homie tray. Another thing you're going to need to consider is having quality nutrients and quality mediums. If you go into it by not having something that's more formulated or tailored towards cannabis, you're not likely gonna get the results you're after. You may get more robust growth or faster vegging, but not necessarily something that's tailored to bringing out those terpenes or flavonoids or in general, that's gonna grow for cannabis. So starting out with quality in general is gonna bring you quality in the end. And me and Rob have both kind of bounced around as far as nutrient goes, nutrients go, but we've, I think both found something, a recipe that works for us and delivers us the flavors we're looking for, the bud we're looking for, and ultimately the uh, craft cannabis that we all seek out. Um, now we've had to bounce around genetics as well and that's something, a dead horse we've beaten up here on the it's channel. Too aggressively. <laughs> uh, but there's always different things you can try to add to see if you can develop more flavor out of your bud. And that's why regardless if it's organic, synthetic, you need these things in line. There's so many variables that come into play where you can't just say one thing is gonna be the end result. So, essentially, that's where we go into the next step. <laughs> Looks like there's a little bit left of my blunt, so I'm not mad at that. Now the next tip would be plant training. Now this can also help, of course, increase your yields, but some techniques can also increase your overall potency and even flavor. 
Two options that work really well are low stress training or LST and also super cropping. We've got videos that cover those extensively in the link below and on our channel. Number four, environmental conditions. Now mainly you want to focus on your airflow and temperature control. Small decreases in temps at night can help increase the trichome and turt production. No more than five degrees though. If you go any higher than that, you do risk negative stress. So you don't want to end up pushing it too far. Just that small drop can actually help increase the potency overall with that plant and those terps. Five, harvesting at the right time. Now I've had a few different strains that if I harvest a little bit earlier, it seems to have a little bit more flavor and others, if I harvest a little bit later, it has a little bit more flavor. And really it's about finding that sweet spot depending on the genetics and overall phenotype that you're working with. Now again, like with the headbanger, that one's supposed to be a 10 week strain. I pulled it at nine weeks, I pulled it at eight weeks. And honestly, I think that flavor's a little bit better when I do a little bit earlier. As we're regulate, when I let that go a little bit longer, it's got a lot more funk, more hues, overall prettier. Sometimes you do sacrifice a little bit of production in your weight side, but if you're gonna get more terps and you're a somewhat picky smoker like myself, you may want to try that out, especially depending on those strains. Look into it, check out some forums, check out in the 420 Growers Club if there's different people who grow in these strains. It's really easy to just do a quick Google search before you decide to actually make that decision. Early pull, late pull, on time, it's really up to you. And of course you don't wanna pull it too early or too late. If you have a plant that's pulled too early, those trichomes and the terpenes and everything aren't gonna be mature enough. Too late, it's gonna to be too mature and degrade. So you wanna find that sweet spot again, depending on what you're growing. And number six that goes right along with harvesting at the right time would be proper drying and curing. Now speed drying is something I hear of way too often. Using dehumidifiers, blasting fans in there, having the humidity just too low in the room in general. Doing that's gonna trap the chlorophyll in your plant, which is gonna give you that planty, basic, kind of just not finished flavor and smell. And it can't even result in that nasty, just funky hay smell. So you really don't wanna have that happen. Now with that being said, some strains do dry and cure a little bit faster. Fluffier strains, of course, are gonna dry a little bit quicker. The genetics that really just have those strong terps in general, those usually will cure up a lot quicker. Now again, with the Regulate and the Headbanger, as soon as those are dry, it's got some funky, strong aroma, very, very good flavor. And it really just gets a little bit better over time, nothing dramatically. Other strains, it seems like it takes a lot longer, like 14 to 21 days, you know, a good three weeks before you get that nice funk out of it. So it really just, again, depends on the genetics that you're growing, but also about that process of pulling it at the right time, getting in the optimal environment, everything set up properly, and make sure that you're doing everything right before you get to this process. Because if you don't do those things initially right, at this point, it really doesn't matter what you do. You can cure as long as you want, but it really is not gonna get any better. And last but not least, the bonus tip, use lighting with beneficial UV spectrum. Now my go-to is a 315 watt ceramic metal halide, link below in the video, which explains exactly why and in detail, like more detail than probably necessary. But that's really something that I've noticed a difference in my overall terpene production. I've had bud that before was pretty good that now growing underneath the 315 has brought out some flavors that I really didn't notice that were there before. So by switching it up, you know, I did a little bit of research initially, you can get that in some LEDs, but with the price point and for me transitioning from high pressure sodium by using the converter kit, to the 315 watt ceramic metal halide. It was a no brainer getting in that UV spectrum that's more beneficial for the plants because while I'm dropping the cost and maybe dropping a tiny bit in overall yield, I'm increasing some of my quality and that's really what I'm looking for. So if these tips helped you and you need more help with your garden, make sure you check out the 420 Growers Club. The link will be in the description. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment. It always helps this channel. YouTube seems to like comments and likes and engagement in general. So if you wanna help this channel grow, that's the best way to do it. This is Rob from CLTV, stay lifted.